So today we'll talk about uh, GAPIT and using that for genome-wide association studies. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with GWAS already and some of the packages that are out there that are currently available. Um, GAPIT is just another one that you may choose to use. It has a lot of functional utility and I personally like it a lot. And hopefully by the end of the day's uh, webinar, you will too. Um, so here's just a brief overview for what we'll be covering today. Um, I've kind of broken it down into four parts. Um, part one is kind of an introduction, um, some background information, as well as installing RStudio. I will be doing my R demo in RStudio. It's a pretty nice um, user interface that makes R just a little bit more manageable. Um, part two, we'll be loading some sample files, um, excuse me, going over the sample files, loading GAPIT source code so you can actually initialize the program and then part three we'll be doing the loading of the files, checking the data, and then doing the actual analysis. And then part four we will cover the output that GAPIT generates. And um, I'll take some questions and then I actually have a live demo that I'd like to run at the end. So some of the learning objectives for today. Um, just briefly installing RStudio, um, it's pretty straightforward. Sean asked that I cover it, um, just so people get a little bit more exposure to it. Um, also, we'll, we'll be loading the packages and the source code for GAPIT, um, sample files, basic analysis, and again, covering the output so that you guys can get the most out of using GAPIT. Um, just as a brief disclaimer, um, what I'm assuming for today's tutorial is that you are familiar with R and some of the basic commands like loading data, um, how to type commands, kind of the structure of it. And I'm also kind of assuming that you have an understanding of the principles of GWAS. Um, obviously there's a lot of theory behind it. There's a lot of statistical knowledge behind it that I will not be covering today because that could cover an entire semester. Um, so again, just to clarify what I won't be covering is installing and running R. Um, there's a great tutorial on the extension website that covers this and gives a very good introduction to the program. And also, I won't be covering GWAS and the theory behind it. Um, and finally, the genomic, production, genomic prediction functions of GAPIT. Um, I won't be going over that um, either. It, does, it is capable of doing that, but for the sake of time, um, I can only cover so much. So what is GAPIT? Um, from the name, it's Genome Association and Prediction Integrated Tool. It's a statistical package that was developed by Alex Lipka and Zibu Zhang at uh, Cornell, and they are members of Ed Buckler's group. And to, I guess, be somewhat coarse, it's kind of like TASL, but it's implemented in the R software environment. And I think that has a few advantages that maybe you don't get with TASL, um, and it's perhaps one of the reasons that I think I like using it, and I think why some other people are enjoying the benefits of using it. And I know this paper is posted on the website, but I did just want to throw in the citation in case you didn't see it. So you might be asking yourself, why should I be using GAPIT? Um, there are already a bunch of programs out there that do GWAS, but one of the things that's becoming an issue as the genomic area progresses is the size of the data sets. And they are getting quite large. Um, I don't even work with a very big one. Um, I think it's probably only like 15 million um, cells for the genotype data. And so, you know, I've already seen performance problems. And so GAPIT has a unique ability, again, because in R, um, it has some options available to it, like file splitting. And that allows you to split up your data into multiple files so you can bring it into R in separate pieces and then kind of run your analyses once it's in the environment. Um, some of these other programs have complex user interfaces. Some are even command line driven. So the question I guess maybe you have to ask yourself is how willing are you to learn another program? And most of you are already familiar with R, so it just makes sense to kind of just stick with one. And I think a lot of the time people think maybe because it's an R or some kind of command line program that it requires a lot of code. And as you'll see today, it's, it does not. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, again, some of the reasons I like it are the data manipulations, you know, analyzing field data, you know, calculating the various statistics. You can all do that in one program. You, know, you don't have to do, you know, adjusted means in SAS and then import that in a tassel. 
Um, so it's very nice. Um, the supporting information is excellent. It's just outstanding. They have a wonderful user manual. And it's one of the unique features is Gapit was designed so that you can take their user manual and essentially cut and paste their code out of the manual and put it into R and run it. Um, it is easy to use. The developers, um, especially Alex Lipka, um, <laughs> extremely helpful. He has so many dumb questions that I've had and has always been very gracious about it. And then finally, from a performance issue, um, I find that Gapit is quite fast. Um, some of the analyses I ran in Tassel used to take you know, a better part of a day, day and a half. And when I switched to Gapit, I was able to do them in three to four hours. So, I mean, your time is valuable, so that's, you know, a consideration. Um, installing RStudio, just briefly, you can go to the um, website listed here, select Download Now, and Download for Desktop. And it'll essentially walk you through the installation of RStudio. It's pretty easy. And RStudio is a very nice environment to work in. You'll see in this photo here. Right here you have your script window, and then down here is the actual R console. Over here is your workspace image. So in this case, you can see that look, I have data loaded. I have all the gap at functions loaded. And then down here is kind of where you have your plots. You can also manage your packages. And at the demo at the end, um, we can explore some of those utilities. So running Gapit, um, my biggest piece of advice would just be use the manual. Um, it's like an R vignette, but it is literally a thousand times better. It has all the code. Um, you can copy and paste it, like I said. They outline several scenarios that you might encounter with your own data. And one of the more important things is how it describes how to format the data for input. As just about everybody knows, this is where most of your time is spent. Um, doing the actual analyses doesn't actually take that long. Um, and then again, it lists all the options for doing the analyses. Today, I will present, but a short, a short, short list of them. There's a lot of them, and that's kind of the power of Gap. It is how much stuff that you can do. Um, it also describes the output that's generated. Um, because it's in R, it has the ability to create a lot of graphs. Uh, I guess I shouldn't speak out of turn. I'm not sure if the new version of Tassel is doing this, but it generates a lot of the output that you want, like Manhattan um, plots, QQ plots. Um, allelic effect estimates. And then finally, the manual, uh, kind of towards the end, explains some more advanced features of the program. And we might touch on those in the demo as well. So I've included a few sample files on the website. Um, these were all generated from the barley cap, um, which is similar, you may have like the sole cap and whatnot. Um, the data is available from this website, the Tritacy Toolbox. And the one that we'll be analyzing today is data from a replicated field trial. There's 768 lines, and that is comprised of eight separate breeding programs, each submitting 96 plus 10 check lines. And the trait that we'll be looking at is grain protein content. Um, this trait is extremely important in terms of malting and brewing. Um, if your beer has too much protein in it, it gets hazy um, and actually starts to precipitate out. And just to clarify, GAP does handle multiple traits per run. So the sample files, if you have time to look at them, um, you'll notice the genotype data is in the HapMap format. Um, this is becoming quite common um, format for the data. But again, check the manual because there's a lot of other options. And so the two files that are up are the genotypes in the HapMap format, and then the protein content of the grain, which is in percentage. And the markers, the number of markers we're using is 2,159, and they've been filtered on uh, missing data set at 20% and a minor little frequency of 1%. Um, for those of you not familiar with the hat map format, it's pretty much a genetic map and marker data put into one file. Um, when you bring it into R, um, I know for me personally where I get my download of my data, they include some pound signs. And it's important to make sure those aren't in the headers. Um, they typically show up in the assembly number column. And then it's kind of unique about GAP. It doesn't actually use all the hat map information. Really what it cares about is the name of the SNP, the chromosome, and the position. Um, everything else can be filled in with NAs with regard, with regard to like the assembly, the center, and some of the other information. And when you do the actual import, you want to make sure that you set the header equal false command. And so to give you a better idea of this, um, 
here's RS, so in, our, in the barley cap data, our markers are denoted um, by the actual BOPA, or the uh, genotyping chip. And so here you can see the name of the marker, the alleles, whether it's AG, what type of SNP it is, excuse me, the chromosome, the position, and this strand through Q code, this is the stuff I was talking about that you can um, leave as NA. Um, it doesn't screw up GAPIT, and GAPIT doesn't really need that information. And then finally over here, you can see these are the actual lines, um, Harrington Robust, and you can see the SNP genotype call. So this is what HapMap data looks like. Um, I know at this point, some of you might be saying, well, my data is not in HapMap format. Not to worry, GAPIT handles lots of stuff, and we will talk about that a little bit. Um, the phenotype file is pretty much just a straightforward text file. Um, put, you know, use taxa as the head, header for the entries, you know, the lines that you're evaluating. And like I said, GAPIT handles multiple phenotypes. Um, it's just that when you submit the phenotype file to the program, you need to have each trait in its own column. Um, and then missing data should be coded as NA or NAN. And when you import the data, use header equal true. And so here's just kind of a quick image of what the uh, file looks like that we'll be looking at today. And like I said, like if you had another trait like perhaps heading date or plant height, you would just enter heading date here and have the subsequent entries for that for each line as well as plant height. And then when GAPIT runs the analyses, it sees that there's multiple columns and so it automatically does the GWAS for each trait. So there's no extra programming required on your part. So in terms of running GAPIT, um, it needs some other programs. Um, GAPIT uses source code from the Buckler website, which is the same spot where you can get TASL. And instead of like, they use source code because it allows them to update the package continuously without always having to download a new version from the CRAN mirror that you typically have to do in R. Um, so that's kind of beneficial and helpful. Um, you'll notice at the bottom it says important if GAPIT isn't loading, check the website. Sometimes they update the code and the packages that you need to run it and they'll typically tell you. Um, so GAPIT also uses some of the bioconductor packages as well as some other ones that have been generated and then it also uses EMMA which is a program for uh, estimating variance components in the P plus K model. And then finally there's you know the pack or the functions install packages and library and I'm I'm sure most of you are familiar with that but we can cover that in the demo. And so these are what the first few lines of code actually look like. Um, so here's the bio bioconductor code, the install you need the gplots LD heat map and genetics and then the library will actually load them. And then down here you can see the source code and you can see that GAPIT functions, that's, you know, tells R where, what function it's going to get. And then finally, here's M at the bottom down here. So uploading files, most of you are